Hi there, I'm Nick Fur. thanks for being here today. And what I want to do today is show you a build for a pulse multiplier that I designed. And it's a little bit special. So before I tell you what's special about it, let's talk about what a pulse multiplier is. And the pulse multiplier basically is something, it's a redstone circuit where I can input a pulse and I'll get more than one pulse out, right? That kind of makes sense. And the number of pulses you get can, can vary on the circuit that you've built. But what I wanted from mine was something quite special, something I've not seen on Bedrock before. So uh, these were the requirements. I wanted it to be one wide tileable. I wanted it to have a fast reset because often pulse multipliers will um, be able to, to turn on quite quickly, generate some pulses. But then after it's finished, it takes quite a long time before you can use it again. And I wanted mine to be pretty much instant. I also wanted it to be really fast and be able to generate up to five pulses per second which is the maximum speed you can get. And I want to be able to change the number of pulses you got from it so that it was variable. And that would typically be from one pulse to 576 pulses. Um, 576 is because that's nine times 64. You get nine slots in a dropper. So that seems like a sensible number. And it would be item based so that I could put in uh, N items into the system and I'd get N pulses out. And it would be exactly N pulses because it's actually quite sim It's a lot simpler to design one where you put in, say, three items, you get five pulses out. You put in four items, you get six pulses out. So that's easier. Now, but I wanted to be able to say, okay, if I put in exactly, you know, 123 items, I will get exactly 123 pulses out of it. And that just takes a little bit more effort. And then the final things, I want it to be compact. And that's got a big exclamation mark after it because, frankly, it's not super compact. But I think it's, a well, it's certainly as good as I can get it. And I'd be really interested to see if anyone comes up with a better idea. So it's a bit of a challenge for you guys. But why would we want such a thing? Well, actually, the reason I wanted to design this was the idea of a one wide tileable shop. So typically in a shop, you, you will order some goods and then you want to be able to fire those goods out to... The, to the player uh, as quickly as possible. So that's hence I want it to be quick, I want it to have a fast reset, I want it to be tileable. Um, and because you want to be, uh, do your stock control properly, if I want to sell, you know, say 64 iron for a diamond, I want to make sure that exactly 64 iron comes out. So it's got to be reliable and it helps if I can say, well, I put 64 items into the system, therefore I know that 64 items will come out. And I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so let's dive straight in. My first attempt at this, I did quite a few months ago and posted it on Reddit, but I never made a video because I wasn't really happy with it. Uh, this thing is, is a bit of a crime against redstone, to be honest. It's got this big long line of 15 redstone dust coming around here. I couldn't find a way of getting rid of that. It's got um, four obsidian per slice, which seems like, more than it should need and it uses a soft inversion mechanism where when you power a piston an attached torch turns off that is in itself is kind of is pretty cool actually but it can be quite laggy uh, having these pistons because they try and extend but they're blocked by the obsidian and that can cause lag but this thing does work and what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you um it working so the way it works is i've got a 10 items here which are my, um, you know, my counter effectively. And I've got up here a dropper, which has, you know, whatever items in I want. So let's put in three stacks of yellow concrete. And hopefully when I press this button, 10 items will get fired out at this end. And hopefully I have exactly 10 items that I do. I can put those back in there. But yeah, it, it just seemed a little bit big and a little bit cumbersome. So I spent the last week or so looking for alternative designs and I came up with this, which might not look much smaller, but it's actually 12 by 6 instead of this one, which was 14 by 7. So it's actually quite a lot smaller and it has less obsidian. It doesn't have any of the SI pistons, but on the other hand, it has a shared clock. So each of the slices share a clock. 
so that clock will necessarily stick out of the side. The spoke changes I've made, there are still two obsidian in this design. And if you, uh, if, if you think that's too much, then absolutely I've got variations of this which will allow you to get rid of your obsidian completely, but they are a little bit less compact. So what I might do is I'll show you how to build this. And then uh, as I could do that, I'll talk through what all the components are doing, how it's working. And then at the end, I'll show you a couple of alternative designs for how you make this work without the obsidian. Okay. So we're going to build one more slice of this. And that explains as I go along. So we're going to start in this area here. And what we've got is essentially a block swapper. So I've got two uh, droppers, one with items in, one without items in. And by swapping those around, um, I can cause one of items in to come to the top and power this comparator here. Okay, and then um, what we're going to do is going to push all the items back out of it into the other one. The comparator goes off again until I swap them around once more. So let's have a look how that works. I'm going to put a piston down here, a dropper on there, and then I want another piston which is two up from the previous one and two across here and this one has a dropper facing downwards like so and uh, then I'm going to put a block here and a torch and what you'll see is that then it sends my dropper up and this dropper was facing this way into here so now if you powered this it would push items into the second dropper and we're going to put another torch here. If I do that, this piston will extend and it'll push both of these along here. And I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I need the obsidian here and I'll need obsidian here as well. I put my second torch down. And if I was to give this now a one tick pulse, you can see that they swap around. And the reason they swap around is because I turn off both these torches at once for one tick and then turn them back on again. Uh, when they go back on, this piston is still in its retraction phase and therefore can't respond. This piston was already retracted and so it can respond first and therefore can push. So it's always the one which is retracted which pushes next. And that's why we see them swap around. Okay, so I don't want to leave her to give one tick pulse. We're going to use an observer for that. And the way I'll do that is with a sticky piston here an observer facing away from the build and a button just on here like so okay so now the button extends the piston the, pist the observer then powers this block and causes those torches to go off one tick swapping them around okay so our point was that by having um, items in here that would then power this comparator which in turn powers this block and a torch attached to the block. And this torch is our on off switch for the clock. So we have a clock here and I've used comparator clock and it's on one tick, that's important. Um, we want it to be max speed and also you, you get different timings if it's on um, a different number of ticks. So we want it to be max speed and we're gonna extend that clock out to the next slice. So we'll put a repeat here on one tick and um, bring my dust across like so. But because this torch is powering this block, actually nothing is going to happen to this block above it. And therefore, if I have a torch on there, it's just going to stay off because of this. When I get items in here, that'll power this comparator, I'll turn this torch off and the clock will be able to do stuff. So you can see if I take that torch away, this starts to flash. Okay, so now we've got items at the top, we've got our clock running, and I want to push those items into the bottom. So this is kind of like an auto dropper, if you like, but a rather complicated one. So put a, um, a repeater there into a block, into another repeater, which will power this obsidian, which in turn will power this dropper. So again, if my torch was turned off, you'll see that clock will run and it would power the dropper. So now we've got a system which should work pretty much. And if I take my output block here 
And let's, for the time being, put a dropper facing this way with, say, 64 pumpkins in it. I'll put some items in here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, say. So what should happen is when I press my button, I'll get six items out of here. That's what we want. Um, but we will be a bit disappointed, I think, because I think we're going to get seven, maybe even eight. Yeah, eight. So you actually get two more items than the number you put into the dropper. And if that's all you want, then then you're done. OK, so if you want to if you're happy to be able to adjust the items in your dropper over here, um, to be too less in the number of pulses you get from the system, then you're done. But I don't want to do that. I want to get exactly the right number of pulses out. So we're going to add this next bit of a circuit. And what that is, is I have a sticky piston here with a redstone block. And I'm going to take that into the case there. A repeater on one tick. A torch under here. A torch on top of here into another block it's all a bit kind of convoluted but um this is the the best way i found to fit it all in and then two repeaters here and you see by default those repeaters are on that pumpkin those repeaters are on and therefore they're powering this block and therefore this torch is having no effect so we've got two things stopping the clock from running at the moment one is this circuit around here and one is this torch which is keeping this torch turned off and this circuit adds extra delay. So now what should happen with my pumpkins is, remember we had six items there. Press my button. And you see we get six items out. So I'm getting exactly six ticks um, coming from here. Okay, and that's totally reliable. So if I want to say even just one item, press the button. I will get exactly one item out of here. So it works for any number of items. Um, that's one thing actually about this one. If you did want to build this one for some reason, because it's maybe it doesn't have a shared clock. Uh, if you want to have just one item come out. Um, like so. Then by default, it won't give you anything. And you need to turn the repeater in the slice where you just want one item down to one tick. And now, hopefully, you'll see we get exactly one item. So this design, you have a slightly different setting if you want one item. In my new one, this will work for any number of items from uh, one up to um, back from zero, if you like, up to 576. OK, there's a couple more things that are worth knowing about this. And the first one is that if I change my clock speed by Put this to two ticks, for example. Let's close everything down. Uh, how many items have I got in here? I've got 16 at the moment. And so when I press a button, that should spend 16 items to me. And you see it's doing it a lot slower than it was before. But what will happen is I'll only get 15 items. So the timing of this is kind of specific to uh, the clock speed as well. And uh, ideally, I'd remove some delay in this part of the circuit, but uh, at the moment, that's not very easy to do. So this design will work with a um, fast clock like this and not with a slower clock. OK, the second thing I want to talk about was uh, how you'd actually use this in practice. So obviously I'm using it, you know, I said for, for one wide shop circuit. Well, actually, you don't need to do that. Of course, you could just take your output from here to uh, pulse whatever it was you wanted or indeed the torch up here but in practice what we probably do for a shop is you'd have something like this and you'd have a, like a little channel along here where items are uh, fired out and then you could run a water stream to collect all of the items and bring them down to your player and you could even have a double speed slice so if you wanted to um, output twice the number of items as you get pulses, then you could do this. So if you're trying to sell something maybe for, you know, four stacks for a diamond or something, then uh, this will make it much quicker to dispense because you only need to put two stacks into here 
and each of these two droppers will dispense two stacks. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to do was talk about what if you don't like this whole arrangement here, you don't like the obsidian, uh, and you'd like to get rid of some obsidian from the build. Okay, so let's uh, take this whole back section out, and we'll look at a, a slightly different way of building the same thing. Okay. So we're still, we're still going to need to do roughly the same idea, right? So we're going to have a piston down here and that piston will have a dropper on it facing this way. And we're going to need another piston back here, like that. What you'll notice now is the droppers are one block closer to the comparator because we haven't got the obsidian in between here. However, I can't use the same circuit as I had before. Um, I'm going to have to use something a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two redstone blocks and pop them up like that. I'm going to take two sticky pistons like so. I put a block here and a block here with a torch on there. Okay, so you can see we're starting to extend it out a bit to the right already. Um, but this circuit works basically exactly the same way, except it doesn't need a pulse, and it's always reliable without the obsidian there. So I press this, then I turn it off again, it swaps. But now it's stateful, okay? So it switches the order when I press the lever on and when I turn the lever off. So to switch this, we need a T flip flop. And the uh, one of the smallest T flip flops you get is actually this one. So we'll need two redstone dust, a comparator, and a um, we'll need a dispenser as well. A dispenser, and we'll need a powder snow bucket, like so. Okay. So if I put my uh, dispenser there, pop a powder snow bucket into there, that will give out a single set of two. We should turn this torch off. Swap these round, and I can just put a block there with my button on here now. And you could, of course, fold this underneath if you wanted, if you'd rather have a build, you know, build taller rather than longer. Uh, but now, if I press this, the powder snow is pushed out. That turns off this redstone dust, allows the torch to come on, and then the pistons extend. Okay, so the reason this works is because. Um, when I'm retracting the redstone blocks, then they are taken away from this piston first, so it always retracts first. And then they arrive here one tick later, and that's when this one can extend out. And then the other way, same thing, they get pulled away from the extended piston up here. So it starts to retract, and they arrive at this piston, which then starts to push. So it always makes sure that things happen in the right order. There we go. So that's just a different way of building it if you want to avoid uh, the obsidian in the build. Okay, so I hope you found something useful in that. And uh, I'd be really interested to hear if A, you take up a challenge and try and make a smaller version. I'd be really keen to see that. B, if you decide to turn this into something, uh, maybe you, you, you go ahead and do that one wide tileable shop. Maybe you find some other use for it. I'm really interested to know about that. Stick it down in the comments uh, and I'd be really keen to, to hear back from you. But uh, otherwise, if you're new to the channel, do go check out some of my videos. There's some really interesting stuff in there. And if you've been here since forever, then either way, I'm looking forward to seeing you next time.